right, in this video, we're going to look at the mixed review part five for the ATIT's math T6 test. This problem that we'll cover here is remotely similar to problem number 13 found in the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. We have a table here, and this table shows the monthly utility bill rounded to the nearest dollar for each month of a year for a family. The average monthly temperature is also given. So this family, your family, our family, whatever you want to call it, but this is like a little table where we have our months, we have the average temperature for that month across here, and then we have the bill, the utility bill for that month rounded to the nearest dollar. So let's make a scatter plot, and we want, when we make a scatter plot here, we want to identify the independent and dependent variables. Now, when I think about independent and dependent variables, what I do is I ask myself this, which variable depends on the other variable? Now, I'm going to talk about the average temperature and the bill, the average temperature and the bill. Ask yourself this question, does the temperature depend on the bill or does the bill depend on the temperature? You know, the, the bill, the temperature does not depend on the bill. The bill that we get each month Yes, that does depend on how hot or how cold it was outside. So the bill price, the cost of our bill, that is our dependent variable. The utility bill depends on the average temperature. That's our independent variable. Now let's make a scatter plot of this. Uh, I do have the scatter plot and the time series graph down here, but let's go look in Excel to get a nicer view of these graphs. So the same information we have right here, and what I'm gonna do in Excel is I'm just gonna highlight over some pieces to give you some ideas here. But it's the same information, and this is the scatter plot. So when we make a scatter plot, you want to put your independent variable on the x-axis. The independent variable goes on the x-axis. The dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Remember we said our monthly bill depends on the average monthly temperature. So the dependent variable monthly bill goes on the y-axis. This represents dollars, 0, 10, 20, all the way up to 100. And the average monthly temperature, yes, these are scaled pretty much the same, but these are actually temperatures. So really, we don't even need like 10 degrees or 20 degrees because our coldest temperature, uh, what do we have for our coldest average temperature? 33 degrees over here in Dece December. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at this dot right here. Um, we have a dot on our scatter plot that corresponds to this. 33 is the average temperature for the month of December. $95 was the utility bill for that month. That's the coldest temperature. So that's going to be this one right here around 33. And if we go up to $95, notice I'm between 90 and 100, that first dot right there. And you see this little yellow window that pops up beneath the mouse here. It says series bill nearest dollar point 33. Well, what I want you to look at is what's in parentheses. 33,95. That is your independent variable, comma, your dependent variable. So notice the 33, that is our independent variable, our temperature. Our average temperature was 33 degrees for the month of December. And 95 was the utility bill that we paid. All of these dots up here correspond to one of these pairs of numbers. And this is how we make our scatter plot. So let me look down here at this uh, lowest point, if you will. This point that we have right here, uh, look at the parentheses again, 77 comma 56. 77 represents our independent variable. When the average monthly temperature was 77 degrees, our bill was $56. The family's bill was $56. The one downside to this scatter plot is that maybe you're interested in knowing what month this occurred in. If this is the only thing we have given to us, then we don't know what month this occurred in. We'd have to look back at our table and notice the month of May is when we had a average temperature of 77 and our bill was $56. So yeah, we can see some trends in here. We can see that we have some highs and some lows, but a time series graph will help you see some trends over the course of the year. Here's a time series graph right here. Notice our x-axis has changed, but our y-axis is the same. This lets you see trends over the course from month to month. So at January, during the month of January, look at this now. Look at how this is showing. The value was 91. Value 91. You see that yellow window right there? Value 91. If we go back up here and look, if we look at January, 
the value or the bill is 91. So this lets you see a trend over the course of a whole year. January, our value was 91. February, our value was 84. And we can see a trend that from January to May, our bill is dropping. Well, that kind of makes sense. But that, again, that depends on where you live. You know, January is really cold, so you're probably going to have a high utility bill. At least it is where I am. Maybe that's a little bit different where you live. But um, once we hit like March, April, and May, we, you know, springtime, you get those nice mild temperatures. So maybe you're not going to have as, uh, you're not going to be running the air or the heat as much. But then when summer comes around, June, July, and August, we have a peak in our utility bill. Then it drops back down around September, but then it starts to climb back up again as it gets cold outside. So this lets you see that trend. This is a time series graph where your x-axis is going to be your time, in this case months, our y-axis is going to be the bill, how much our bill is. Now, another type of graph that we can look at, and I'm going to come back up here to our table, if you look at the total spent this year, basically if we take our utility bills and we add them all up, that's how much money was spent on utility bills for that year, $936. A pie chart can help you break up each individual month, and it can tell you what percentage. You know, Let's take December, for example. $95 uh, was our utility bill in December. That was actually the most expensive utility bill. And it turns out it was the coldest month on average as well. But $95, you know, what percentage is that of 936? Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, we talked about percentages. A quick way to find a percentage, 95 is what percent of 936? We can divide those two numbers. So 95 divided by 936. And if we move this decimal two places to the right, we get roughly 10%. $95, the month of December, when you had that bill of $95, that's like 10%, or that is roughly 10% of your whole yearly budget or the whole yearly expense that you spent on your utility bills. Let's look at another one, for example. But before we do that, let's look at a pie chart. So 95, that represented somewhere around 10%. So look at a pie chart. Now, that was our most expensive bill, right? December was? Well, this orange one looks like it's the biggest slice in my pie chart. That blue one looks kind of big, and that darker blue or whatever looks kind of big, too. But if you look at this one right here, notice if you look at the yellow window that pops up, you know, right around here, it says point December, but value is 95, and this pie chart also shows a percentage, 10%. And we said it was somewhere around 10%. Uh, let's look at a cheaper month. What was our cheapest month? That was in May, if I'm not mistaken, the $56. So how does 56 compare? What percentage of 936 is $56? A quick way to do that is 56 divided by 936. And that's around 6% if we move our decimal two places to the right. If this is a little bit confusing to you as, as why I'm dividing, go back and look at the goal-based videos that are based on percentages. In this case, since we know the number and we're trying to find the percent, we divide these two values. So 56 divided by 936, that's roughly 6%. Well, let's come down here to our pie chart and let's find the smallest slice. Uh, probably this one right here. Did I get lucky? Yes, because look at this one here, this light blue color, and it says bill nearest dollar point. Notice it says May. That's what's corresponding to our table, and the value was 56, but look at that percentage, 6%. Because when we divided 56 divided by 936 and we converted that to a percent, we got somewhere around 6%. We just saw that a moment ago. And there you have it. You know, um, that's just one question in the study manual from the mathematics section quiz. But I wanted to take a look at these graphs a little bit more to kind of help you recap, assuming that you have watched my goal based videos. And again, I did dive into a lot more detail on percentages, finding percentages of a number or finding a percent. You know, sometimes you multiply, sometimes you divide. Check those out. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.